Hello everybody, welcome back one more time to my German Grammar for Beginners series. This is lesson number 12 and I'm in a very good mood today. I hope you are as well. Um, because uh, it did actually take a lot of time to prepare this lesson. So I'm very happy that I finally get to do it with you. Today we're going to learn how to ask open-ended and closed-ended questions. And if you think you know all about it already, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> so please bear with me, okay? Let's get started right away. What is actually the difference between an open-ended and a closed-ended question? Closed-ended questions typically only require an answer that can either be yes or no. Do you like pizza? You can, of course, give an explanation on why you're answering yes or no, but we consider this a closed-ended question because the answer is complete by saying yes or no. Whereas, in contrast to this, an open-ended question requires a much more detailed reply in terms of why do you like pizza? You cannot answer with yes or no to a question like that, can you? The sentence structure between these two types of questions are going to differ in terms of the position of the verb and whether or not we use a question pronoun. So the presence or absence of a question pronoun will have an influence on what the structure of the question is going to look like. What we already studied is the position of the verb in those two types of questions. I think this was even the very first lesson of this series where I explained to you that a yes-no question and a command are those two sentence types for main clauses where the conjugated verb is going to occupy the first functional position in the sentence, as in this um, example sentence that you can see in my table down here. Gehst du nach Hause? Gehst du nach Hause? Are you going home? You can answer with yes or no. It is a yes-no question. We place the conjugated verb gehen, gehst, in the very first position. We place the subject of the sentence, du, right after it. And then any object or addition or directional or location or whatever it might be at the end of the sentence. Okay, and of course a question mark because it's a question. When we compare now W questions, these ones are going to start with a question word or question pronoun. That is not the same thing. I will explain the difference to you in about five, maybe ten minutes. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay, so we start the question with the question word, wann. And then because that is already position number one, the conjugated verb automatically moves to position number two in the sentence. So it occup occupies the same place as it would in a statement. Wann gehst du nach Hause? Wann gehst du nach Hause? Meaning, when are you going home? And you cannot answer with yes or no to this. You need to give, you need to answer with a time, okay? And you do see that what formerly used to be in position two in a yes no question has now moved to the afterfield, as we call it, okay? So in the, um, the last position of the sentence can comprise then the subject, objects, or any other additions. So, do has moved from position 2 to position 3 in the sentence, together with the direction, home. So, this is the part that you already do know, but there's plenty of stuff that you don't know yet, and that's why you have me. Let's dive deeper into yes-no questions first. In order to formulate a yes-no question, we are going to invert meaning to switch the position of the subject and verb so that, in contrast to a statement, the conjugated verb will now occupy position 1 and the subject follows immediately after the conjugated verb. For I call them standard verbs, verbs without any particularity. So we're going to look at separable verbs separately. <laughs> We're going to look at reflexive verbs separately. I call these standard verbs because there's nothing fancy that we need to pay attention to. Okay. Starting from the statement, looking at the question. The statement sentence is Der Vater liest die Zeitung. Meaning the father reads the newspaper. Der Vater, the subject in the first position of the sentence. The conjugated verb in the second position, as is usual for statements. 
And here is our object, the Zeitung, the newspaper in the third spot. In order to turn this into a yes no question, all we need to do is exchange der Vater and Liest, so that Liest is now in front, and we say Liest der Vater, die Zeitung, meaning does the father read the newspaper? Okay, compare one more time. Der Vater liest die Zeitung. Liest der Vater die Zeitung? Yes or no? Very simple. So far, so good. I think this is the part you can already do uh, yourselves. That is very nice, but I'm going to show you a little bit more complicated stuff. Because there are not just standard verbs, as I call them, but instead we have also already looked at separable verbs, and they do tend to mess things up at least a bit, because now we are talking about the so-called sentence bracket in German. The sentence bracket usually consists of two separate parts of a verb that are located in different positions in the sentence with plenty of other stuff in between. So they kind of, they, yeah, they form a bracket around the sentence. And the bracket or the parts of the verb are what I highlight um, in my tables in green here. Okay, so you do know when we have a separable verb, we need to separate the prefix from the infinitive and place it at the end of the sentence or at the end of the clause. This is why an is also in green color because it is a part of the verb. So kommt an has split an infinitive into two separate positions in the sentence that now form a bracket and am Bahnhof at the train station is going to be inserted in the middle field in between the sentence bracket. So in a statement, again, we start with the subject. Der Zug. Then the conjugated verb in second place. Then the middle field and then the separated prefix as the right bracket. Der Zug kommt am Bahnhof an. Der Zug kommt am Bahnhof an. When we now want to turn this into a yes-no question, we are going to invert subject and the first portion of the verb, the conjugated part of the verb. We're going to exchange these, move kommt to the very first position, but we don't change anything about the prefix at the end. That stays at the end. It still forms the right portion of the bracket. Just the left bracket has moved to the very beginning of the sentence. So the yes-no question for a separable verb is then going to look like Kommt der Zug am Bahnhof an? Yes or no? Ja oder nein? Kommt der Zug am Bahnhof an? Okay, so the flexible part is the position of the left bracket. Well, it's not flexible, but it can change based on rules. We can't just do what we want, unfortunately. But the right bracket doesn't move. It stays at the end of the sentence. It is just followed by a question mark. So far to separable verbs. What about inseparable verbs now. So, you know, inseparable verbs also have a prefix, but that prefix does not get detached from the infinitive when we conjugate. So there is no part of the verb that moves to a different position in the sentence. It stays where it is, which, it, which is why it also looks very similar to what we looked um, at for so-called standard verbs. Because there is nothing fancy happening to the prefix, it is exactly the structure that you do know Der Gast bezahlt die Rechnung. Der Gast bezahlt die Rechnung. The guest pays the bill. Statement. In order to make that into a question, we exchange der Gast und bezahlt. And we have bezahlt der Gast die Rechnung. Bezahlt der Gast die Rechnung. Does the guest pay the bill? Okay, this should be quite Logical and easy, nothing special here. But now, reflexive verbs. Now we also need to take care of the position of a reflexive pronoun, which was difficult enough for a statement, I believe. And it's going to get even more... Well, it's not, it's not complicated, but it's something you will need to bear in mind whenever you form a sentence. And it takes a lot of time to automatize this, to make it into an automatic process that you no longer have to think about, that only works through repetition. Let's have a look. Reflexive verbs in a statement form first. Still first position, the subject, der Mann. Wäscht, the conjugated verb in the second place of the sentence. Now we do know 
we need to place the reflexive pronoun immediately after the conjugated verb. For der Mann, it's third person singular, the reflexive pronoun is sich. And we have die Hände as another object in the sentence. We may or may not have one, okay? The statement is, der Mann wäscht sich die Hände. The man washes his hands. Now we want to ask, does the man wash his hands? As we do, we move the conjugated verb to the first position of the sentence, wäscht. But what we would normally have here now is the subject. But we need to pay attention to the reflexive pronoun, which kind of moves together with the conjugated verb one position forward. So it is still wäscht sich, just one position more to the front. Wäscht sich der Mann die Hände? Wäscht sich der Mann die Hände? And as if that was not enough, it does depend on whether or not the subject is a noun, like der Mann, or if it is a personal pronoun. So a, a yeah, pronoun means replacement of the noun he. He is just a simplified replacement for a masculine noun, the man, he. So er is a personal pronoun, that's the category of the word. And if our subject in a sentence is a personal pronoun as opposed to a noun, then the reflexive pronoun does not move one position forward together with the verb. It remains, as it also did with the other, uh, the other question types, we will just invert the, the conjugated verb and the subject, wäscht er, and then sich is still in the third spot. Okay, I will explain that one more time because it might be a bit tricky and I would like you to rem uh, remember it well, okay? In the statement, the reflexive pronoun, where is my, oh yeah, the reflexive pronoun comes after the conjugated verb. For yes, no question, we do move the conjugated verb to the first position of the sentence. That is what both of these questions here have in common. If the subject of a sentence is a noun, or maybe even a name, like the name of a person or a place, okay? It is a noun, which you can tell from, um, um, from the fact that German nouns are always, always spelled, always? Always <laughs> spelled with a capital letter in front, okay? Der Mann is a noun. And when the subject of a sentence is a noun, then the reflexive pronoun moves one position forward together with the verb. Wäscht sich der Mann die Hände? But this does not happen if the subject of the sentence is not a noun, but a personal pronoun. Then we just invert the conjugated verb and subject. Wäscht er and sich stays where it previously was. Wäscht er sich die Hände? Wäscht er sich die Hände? So the presence or absence of reflexive pronouns or also of separable Prefixes tend to make matters a little bit more not complicated, but complex. Okay, German is just complex, but not complicated. So you saw we compared standard verbs, as I call them, basic, basic verbs with no particularity to pay attention to. We compared that with separable verbs where the prefix moves to the end of the sentence. We compared that with inseparable verbs where the prefix stays where it is. And again, with reflexive verbs, where we need to pay attention to the position of the reflexive pronoun, which depends on the type of subject we are using. So far, so good for yes, no questions. So-called open-ended questions are now formed by placing a question pronoun or a question word in the first position of the sentence. That is the part that is new followed by the sentence structure of a regular yes-no question, which we just looked at. So, as I indicated in the beginning, a question pronoun or a question word is, grammatically speaking, not the same thing. Let's have a look at both categories together, okay? On the left side, you will see the German question words or question pronouns, then the corresponding uh, translation to English, and an example sentence um, in the third third column. Okay, so I will read through the question words and question pronouns first. Wer, who, was, what, wann, when, warum, why, wie, how, wo, where, woher, from where, and wohin, to where. 
So the last two are immediately interesting because in English you need a preposition plus the question word from where to where. You need two words in order to form each of these questions. In German, we just combine them together. Wo for location. Woher and wohin are directional. From where and to where. And they have kind of melted the question word and the preposition into one. Woher, wohin. Location versus direction. That is going to be relevant for the verbs that we can use with these sentences. Okay. False friends between English and German are wer, which is not where. <laughs> so that is why the, the um, pronunciation is so important here. V, v. Our W is pronounced like an English V. It's not where, was. It's wer, was. So wer is who and not where. Okay. Now let's have a look at a couple of example sentences and compare uh, the statements from the text. So we say... An open-ended question is formed by placing a question, pronoun or question word in the first position of the sentence. Let's check. Is that true? Aha! Yeah. Each of my example questions starts with one of those question words. Aha! Good. And after that, they continue with the same sentence structure of a yes-no question with the conjugated verb immediately after it. Okay? So, wer bist du? Who are you? Wer bist du? Was ist das? What is that? Was ist das? Wann ist dein Geburtstag? Do you know what that means? Yes, you do know. When is your birthday? Wann ist dein Geburtstag? Warum magst du Bücher? Why do you like books? Warum magst du Bücher? Wie heißt du? So, how... What are you called? We say, how are you called? How? Wie heißt du? Wo wohnst du? Where do you live? Asking about location. Wo wohnst du? Woher kommst du? Where do you come from? Asking about direction. From there to here. Woher kommst du? Wohin gehst du? Where are you going? Again, direction, but this time from here to there. The opposite direction. Wohin gehst du? So in each of these cases, we have the question word or question pronoun in front, the conjugated verb right after that, and the rest of the sentence follows the same logic, the same structure as I explained for yes-no questions. So also reflexive pronouns. And separable prefixes are going to be dealt with in the same way as we already spoke. So the difference is just the beginning of the question, which now consists of a question word or question pronoun. So I have now been using these two terms so many times. It's finally time for me to explain to you what that is. So the very first two of our list here, wer and was, they, they are a bit separate, which is why I chose a different color for them. Wer and was are so-called question pronouns or you can also call them interrogative pronouns from the latin word interrogare meaning to ask or to question question pronouns and they are called pronouns because they can be inflected modified okay so a declension is applied to them they can be inflected in accordance with german cases the four cases nominative genitive dative accusative and therefore belong to the category of pronouns. And uh, you do have something similar to that in English as well, where you say who for the subject, but whose would be German genitive case, whom would be dative and or accusative. So you do differentiate that in English as well, just as we do. And the same applies to was, which can be used as the subject or the object of a sentence. Was ist das? What is that? Was is the subject? Was magst du? What do you like? Then was is the object, because you are now the subject. Okay? Question pronouns can be inflected in accordance with German cases. That's the important message. Now, comparing to that, all of the other elements from the list, wann, warum, wie, wo, woher and wohin, cannot be inflected, so they are not, you cannot apply declensions to them as to wer and was, and are therefore just called question pronouns words, interrogative words.
So a simple word or a pronoun. It's a different category. It's a different grammatical category that now you're going to think, who cares? What's the difference? You're going to see. <laughs> you're going to see the difference, I promise. Okay, so just for you to remember, there are two different categories of words that we can use in order to start a yes-no question with. But in, in, in practice, for now, it doesn't make much of a difference to you. That's right. And then the last category of question we can also ask is concerned with the degree to which something is the case. So if we use the question word V, meaning how, followed by an adjective, that can be used to ask about the degree to which something is described by this adjective. So how, in how far, how much is something the adjective? Mm. Let's look at some examples. Wie lange fahren wir? Wie lange fahren wir? So we start with the question word wie, how. Lange, long. How long drive we? Meaning, how long will we be driving? It asks about a duration of time. To what degree will our driving be long or short? Second one. Wie lang ist dieser Fluss? Wie lang ist dieser Fluss? How long is this river? English does not differentiate between long in terms of a long period of time and length for an object. In German we do. Lange refers to time. Wie lange? For how long? Lang refers to length. Okay, you can measure length. Wie lang ist dieser Fluss? Fluss being river. So now we're asking about the length, the extent to which the river is long or short. And lastly, wie hoch, hoch, wie hoch ist dieser Berg? How high is this mountain? We ask about the degree of the height. Wie followed by the adjective, hoch, high. So the answer to each of these questions could, for example, be zwei Stunden. As the answer to how long will we be driving? Zwei Stunden, two hours. Wie lang ist dieser Fluss? 500 Kilometer. 500 kilometers could be the answer to a question like this. Or, wie hoch? 4000 Kilometer. <laughs> Not many mountains are that high, but some are. Okay. Wie hoch ist dieser Berg? So you will answer with a number and a unit, typically. Um, and luckily, this structure is very, very similar to how you would ask such a question in English. Okay. I have prepared two types of exercise this time because, not because I want to keep you busy, but because I want you to practice all different kinds of formulating questions. Okay. So the first exercise for you asks to please complete the sentence with the missing question word or pronoun in order to form a meaningful question. So each of these gaps here asks for the correct question word or question pronoun to be filled in and uh, to help you understand the question correctly. And you see, I do not provide translations anymore. Okay, we are, we are becoming adults now. We don't need that for every single example <laughs> sentence. I have given you the answer so that the question itself is less ambiguous for you and you will be able to choose the correct question word or pronoun in front. That is exercise number one. And in the second exercise, this is the first time you are going to have to build sentences of your own. So I no longer just give you gaps to fill in. This time you are going to build the sentence yourself. Are you excited? I am. I believe in you. You can do that. So what I provide you here are the different elements of the sentence that you will need to arrange and inflect and compose so that they form a meaningful question. So just, let's just look at one of the examples, okay? I give you the question word. I give you the verb that you need to conjugate. Pay attention to the prefixes, okay? I will give you the subject of the sentence and any objects or other additions that you would need to put into the right position. But with the tables that I showed you earlier in this lesson, you will be able to do that, okay? So, form meaningful questions with the given elements by placing them in the right order, conjugating the verb, paying attention to prefixes or reflexive pronouns. And then if you are, if you want to earn um, A plus with a star, you can also even give the answer to these questions. 
And you can either take a screenshot of the screen right now if you want to do it immediately or please get the lesson material from me. I know you're getting tired of hearing it, but some some of my viewers are still new. So I'm, I'm uh, letting you know that you can have all of the PDFs that I'm using for my presentations for free via email if you just contact me at stefanie.bitterafdeutsch at gmail.com and it usually takes maximum two days until I send you all of the material I have and I uh, would be looking forward to um, yeah to seeing you in my email inbox that would be nice and of course to seeing you again in lesson number 13 you're not going to regret it <laughs> thank you once again for your attention guys see you soon tschüss